Great Britain has a collection of varied landscapes and countryside to rival anywhere else in the world. And the best way to see it is to walk. And we are here to provide some ideas and inspiration. We are the team at Walks Around Britain and we've been discovering some of the most interesting and varied short walks from the Highlands of Scotland to the Channel Islands. We've been there discovering the best walking Britain has to offer. If you thought walking was just about mountains, then think again. We've got walks in the countryside, along water and the coast, through woodlands and forests, up fells and hills, around historic buildings and our industrial past. And not forgetting walks through our towns and cities. Walks to do by yourself, in a group, or with your family, be they the human or canine kind. Along the way, we'll be telling fascinating stories about the landscape, its people and its history. It's all designed to get you out and inspired to experience it for yourselves. Welcome to Walks Around Britain. and you're very welcome to another edition of Walks Around Britain. Now on today's programme we've got two walks between two and eight miles. One is in Wigan and the other is in Perthshire. So later in the programme we journey north of the border to Kenmore. But first it's another urban walk in the borough of Wigan. This time just outside Hindley. The walk starts just off the A58 Wigan Road and threads its way through Bordstain Wood before finishing just shy of the B239. It's an easy linear walk of two miles and should take around one hour one way. I've parked in the limited parking along Hindley Mill Lane but Hindley Railway Station isn't too far away. I'm meeting some of the friends of Bordstain Wood for this walk and Neil is going to tell me why this place is so special. Borsdain Wood is a semi-ancient natural woodland. It's the flora and fauna is quite unique to this area and because the wood has been undisturbed for the best part of a century and you get the usual woodland species, the anemones, the celandines, um, bluebells, loads of bluebells and, and wild garlic and stuff like that and of course Woods are a magical place to walk anyway because they're changing throughout the year. I, I love it here. So a different time of year is a different walk? Oh yes, very definitely, yeah. So what does the wood mean to you then, Alan? It, uh, I recall um, my own past. Uh, it's, it's always been a, a local uh, place for recreation. Uh, the attraction is, is, is the, the woodland. Um, especially seeing the, the flora when it's uh, out in bloom in spring and I can also recall uh, my youth um, being brought here by the parents from where I lived in Hindley uh, and also um, going for picnics uh, in, in a lovely setting. And is this tunnel, is this the first thing that we get on the walk? Certainly, certainly, <laughs> certainly. And when you're just a, a, a five-year-old it's an experience to really Enjoy the experience. So let's go and get to this walk then. Excellent. <laughs> also joining us for the walk is Tracy Morris, the wellbeing coordinator for walks from Inspiring Healthy Lifestyles. So this tunnel dates back to around 1848 with the arrival of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway above us. Out on the far side, and immediately the sound of Bordstain Brook, which is a constant friend on this walk, running all the way through the wood. We're out walking in March, so we're just seeing the shoots of spring appearing.
Ian's going to explain the route and the landscape ahead. So where are we walking on here then today? We're starting here and we follow the path all the way through. It's a steep sided valley, roughly one and three quarter miles through, uh, with a stream running through, uh, different types of vegetation, and then some, some flatter bits, some a bit more undulating. Uh, which takes us all the way through to Aspen. This looks like a perfect spot for those picnics Alan mentioned. There are a few public footpaths branching off from this main woodland route. Plenty to explore. Stainbrook forms the boundary between the metropolitan boroughs of Wigan on this side and Bolton on the other. From here the brook flows into nearby Pennington Flash and then into a river called Glaze Brook. Yeah, so me shaking at this map. The area is livestock free, so it's fine for dogs to be allowed off lead for an explore. And our doggy friends today have been off for a wander too, but they are back on leads whilst we are walking. Plays this daft game where uh, she picks things up while with a stick in her hand and in her mouth as well so she doesn't drop the stick. As Neil mentioned, Broadstane Wood is an ancient woodland, the type of which used to cover most of Britain, but now only 1% of woodland from that time remains. With its plentiful supply of water, the wood is home to a rich diversity of animals, birds, insects, fungi and plants. It's believed there has been continuous woodland cover here since before 1600 AD. Being March, we're right into the wild garlic season and there's a profusion all around the wood. Different parts of the wood are famous for different things. Yeah, so you get loads of kids around here in the autumn yeah. collecting the conkers. So yeah, is it, what's this place called then? Locally it's either called the Avenue or Conker Alley. Yeah. So um, you know, like I say in the autumn you get a lot of, lot of kids up here collecting conkers. It's taking Alan back to his youth there, wasn't it, Alan? <laughs> Came, came to me sycamore trees. Sycamore trees. Well, we're all the yeah, yeah, the were oh, these. Oh, I can see it happening now in front of me. <laughs> the wood was originally part of the Hindley Hall estate and passed through several owners before entering Wigan Council's ownership in 1974. A measure of how important the wood is came 12 years later when it became the first local nature reserve in Wigan. Getting out into woods like Bordstein is great for the body, mind and soul. And not just for humans. We're crossing over the book for one last time as we're near the end of the wood.
and here's Dave to explain what we can do next. Oh, so that's the end of our excellent walk through Borsden Wood. The options now are to walk back through the woods to the start, or you can follow the path up here, which takes you to the uh, Gerard Arms, which is in Aspel, and you could get a bus back from there. So we're going to the pub now then? Yeah, if you're paying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> Looks like I've got a large drinks tab then. Well, a lovely walk there in some urban greenery in the middle of Wigan. Well, after the break, we journey to Perthshire for a lovely walk in Kenmore. Welcome back. Now, from the northwest of England, we're going to Scotland for a walk up a hill. And there's plenty of hills to choose from. We're in Kenmore for this walk, a small village in Perth and Kinross. This walk starts at a car park off a small road from Kenmore and climbs to the top of Kenmore Hill for a fantastic view of the surrounding area, and then back via Queen's Drive. It's three miles and should take around one and three quarter hours. We're staying at Taymouth Marina, at their dog-friendly Lockside Cottage, which, as its name suggests, is on the side of a lock, Lock Tay. The car park we're parking at is only around five minutes drive away from Lockside Cottage. So it's not far for my youngest daughter, Olivia, to wait before we're going out walking. Coming with us on the walk today is a very excited Merlin and Mac. So let's have a look at where we will be going. There are several walks in this area which are waymarked, so you don't get lost. Our chosen one today is the Red Walk. Come you coming, Mills? Mac? Yeah? Come on then, let's go. Come on. The climb starts pretty much straight away, although we're both being helped by two very eager doggies. We're doing this walk in August, so there's plenty of colour around to enjoy. Olivia has got Merlin at the moment, as out of the two, he pulls a lot less than Mac. has been planted with Scots pines and a range of other native trees but you never feel enclosed there's always space to breathe remember whenever there's a fork in the path take the red signed route We've not walked far, but already the sights are opening out around us. Walking in Scotland differs from England and Wales, as it has the right to roam. This allows us walkers access to virtually all land and inland water in Scotland, providing you follow the guidance given in the Scottish Outdoor Access Code. Waymarked routes such as this one, however, means that anyone can access the countryside and take in sites like this. Now this is interesting. These well-made boardwalks takes us safely across some pretty marshy land here. Thank you. 
From now on, it's only red ray marking to the top of Kenmore Hill. And suddenly, the summit is in sight. So, 500 metres, or 1,640 feet above sea level, and this is our reward. Now, on the way up, Olivia wanted to place a stone on the cairn, so... Looking across from the northeast, and the sheer beauty of this landscape is clear. The true highest point is actually away from this trail. I'm on top of the world! But this cairn is by far the most impressive and has the best views. Down below is the model village of Kenmore which dates from the 16th century. With a view like this, it's the perfect backdrop for some daddy-daughter-doggy time. To the southwest is the mighty Loch Tay, some 14 and a half miles long, and the sixth largest loch in Scotland by area. Right, it's time to start the walk down, which snakes around the south of the hill before turning back on itself. Take care here, as this section can be quite boggy. As the route undulates, at parts you can seem to be climbing again instead of dropping down, and this corner signifies the point at which it is now downhill all the way. It's been quite warm today, and I am glad that I'm wearing my breathable Mayor Sports kit. You never tire of this watery view as you gently descend. Again, just like on the way up, there are plenty of way markers to make sure you don't get lost on the way down. All of a sudden, the path meets a grassy track known as the Queen's Drive, so called as it was used by Queen Victoria whilst she was staying at Kenmore during her honeymoon. This path is part of the Rob Roy Way, a 92-mile long-distance walking route. Now it's a short walk along the road we drove here on to return to the car park. And then back to Lockside Cottage for a relax at the side of the lock.
Well, it's always great to get the dogs out on the hill for a great walk in Scotland. And if you want more information about that or any other walk that we do in our series, you can visit our website for more information, walksaroundbritain.co.uk. And if you've got any photos or videos that you'd like to share with us, you can do that on our social media channels. The addresses are on screen now. But until next time, thanks for watching and happy walking. <laughs>